what's up welcome back to our weekly vlog got a fun special one for you today big announcement introducing Megan <laughs> who's Megan that's Megan that's not Megan that's Megan, Hi, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> situated here all right iced coffee by the way we're out of iced coffee again go through that pretty quick mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. back to Megan <laughs> hi Megan hi who are you <laughs> I am mega weeds weeds all right let's um a little bit a little backstory. What's Megan doing here? Uh, I'm hoping she's gonna be a physical therapist and a coach here. Uh, we've been looking for a physio coach for a little while. We opened it up. Um, I met Megan when she was at my one of my live courses. Um, she's a good clinician then. Thought she had a good head on her shoulders. We continued to talk and I said, hey, you should come down and do this. And she said, okay. And then the rest is history. I actually oh, said, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> she said, Accuracy sake. Accuracy <laughs> sake, yes. She's like, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing or living or anything along those lines. It's completely ambiguous to the demands and expectations of myself, but she still came anyways. I like that. Mm -hmm. a, little, a little uncertainty is a good thing. Yeah. All right, Megan, wheeze. Yeah, wheeze. I think mean, LaCroix. You know LaCroix? Yeah. Yeah. Talk about LaCroix. I uh, know. <laughs> No. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What brings you here from uh, Jersey? So I'm from New Jersey. I... Won't hold that against you. Uh, oh, come on. Mm. <laughs> Jersey's a great place, despite what MTV has made it up to. Shots fired. <laughs> um, what am I doing down here? Well, I wanted to change the scenery. I want to be able to provide one-on-one -on -one care with patients, one-on-one -on -one quality care. And oh, don't shake your head at that. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, hold on. Cheers. Cheers. Overpriced <sighs> seltzer water. <laughs> but it just tastes so good. So good. It's awesome. Now this tastes good right here. Look at that beautiful brown liquid. <laughs> mm. All right, back to change of scenery. Uh, change of scenery, I wanted to provide more one on, I want to ultimately provide one-on-one -on -one care, quality care to a patient, um, and not be dictated by insurance or the higher powers that be in healthcare, um, and incorporate like a fitness, healthy lifestyle thing into my clients and the people I work with, and just help make a bigger impact. Which I think you guys share the same similar vision. So. I'd say so. Yeah. I'd say so. What were you doing before? Before I was working for um, a hospital system in New Jersey, and I, at first I started as a split between the acute care setting and an outpatient, and then I transitioned into full-time outpatient there. So for people that don't really understand the demands on physical therapists in a big system, What's the like you say you want to be working one on one with patients? What, what are you? What are physical therapists like yourself typically doing? What were you typically doing, and why is that so different than what we do here? Well, in a traditional setting, um, an outpatient, not in the hospital, but an outpatient, you're expected to um, see well in most places see multiple patients at once. Schedules are staggered. You're looking at one person working on somebody and yelling exercise across the room. Um, it's not as efficient in terms of getting like a bigger picture as to what's going on with the patient. Um, and then you're also expected to finish the notes, bill, everything all throughout the day and it ends up being a really long day and you don't get things done just in the work day. You have to stay after, come in early, all that stuff. Hmm. Got it. 
traditional outpatient clinic, you're expected to see like 10 to 12 patients, sometimes up to 14. How many do we see here on average? What, what, what's our goal to see in the day? Uh, our goal to see in a day per clinician, I think, is like three to five. Yep, three to five. You say that with uncertainty. I do. I come <laughs> right. Well, see, I knew it's by week, and then by month, you got to subtract, divide, add decimal fractions. Yeah. Three to five. Yeah. Math. So let's say average four people. Is that between three to five? <laughs> middle. The middle of three to five is a four. So we want to see four patients a day as opposed to Megan might have been seeing 10 to 12 Yeah, patients anywhere a day. from like 8 to 16 or so around there, I would say, depending on the day and the season and how busy it was. That's exhausting. And <laughs> when you're dealing with people, pe people are a handful sometimes. That they are, yeah. I'm looking at you, the guy behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's looking at you right now. And you're... Lacroix. Passion fruit. Lacroix, Vince? No. Nope. <laughs> there it is. You know what would be good today? What? For us to do, since we're talking physical therapy and how we do our model, I don't think we really talked about this yet, is show the people how we physical therapy. I don't know what that means. You're nodding with the camera. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yes, that sounds great. Let's take them through literally through the doors and show them what it's like to have physical therapy or see a physical therapist at recharge she'll be a physical therapist you can be a patient and then you actually have a patient later coming in and you could tune in a little bit show the people a little bit of an actual patient experience see what it's like role play yeah all right. All right, so when you walk in to recharge, one of our big pet peeves is waiting rooms. We hate waiting rooms because it makes no sense to us. Like as soon as you walk in, you're supposed to stop and sit. Like it's, it's just, when you walk in, you should walk in and be welcome. So that's part of one of the biggest things for us for physical therapy is we want you to feel welcome. So here's how it works. Yeah, come in here. And we get to our social area. So this replaces our waiting room area. And it's the first thing people see. Number one, there's a ping pong table. Everybody loves ping pong. And again with that damn drink. Maybe a person doesn't like ping pong. Number two, there is no official waiting area that needs to be seated. Generally, they go in and it wraps around right into our gym facility. Right? Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's up? So as the physical therapist meets the patient at the door, we get to see into the gym area. We think this is crucial for patients, even before they get to the, an exam room or to our mindfulness room, is to see that, hey, there's weights, there's expectations that I'm gonna move some stuff here, that I'm gonna exercise, and I'm gonna have some sort of fitness involved in my plan of care. You can see that by the weights, by the classes, by the boards, by everything we have is geared to say, hey, you're gonna move some stuff today. And then it sets the expectation that that's the key. In addition, we usually have our treatment table set up in the gym area to also imply that we're going to be able to go back and forth from high quality and high valued medical care into and out of fitness. And they actually are synonymous and work well together. And that ability to provide both aspects of both the health and the health care in terms of well being and health care is a huge add-on for any patient that comes in here to receive recharge physical therapy. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Megan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So tell me what's going on. Uh, so my back hurts. Your back hurts, okay. Yeah. Uh, where? Uh, kind of like in the center lower back. Center lower yeah. back, okay. Tell yeah. me about that. The subjective exam <laughs> is where the physical therapist, the physiotherapist gets the story from the patient and in addition gets their symptom behavior. This is the most important aspect of the evaluation and it's probably the one that in traditional settings we've seen has got the least amount of time. We'd argue that the majority of what you need to learn from a patient and what you need to know to help them, they will tell you. It's a matter of putting together their story, 
understanding their symptoms and pain in order to reach a hypothesis and a conclusion that allows them to keep moving and to reassure them they're going to be okay, as well as rule out any red flags or sinister underlying pathologies we might expect if what we're hearing doesn't match up with what we think will be a normal musculoskeletal issue. So the subjective exam is always us listening more than us talking. Okay, so next after the subjective is the objective exam. And this is where we look at the hypothesis we hear from what they've told us in the subjective exam, and we back it up with what we're seeing and how they're moving and how they're feeling in relative relation to those movements. So for somebody with some low back pain, such as Vince here, what we might do is have them go through some kind of global ranges of motion and put some added stress to that. So Vince is going to touch his toes, he's going to extend back, he's going to bend side to side, he might do some rotation. The physical therapist here at Recharge might then push into it certain ways and see are there any motions that provoke his pain. From there, we can get more specific into joint assessments, into other motions, into loaded motions, but more often than not, we're trying to see are your symptoms reproduced by how you're moving. So we get the basic foundation of movements done for the objective exam. Now, it might lead to something that we see, it might not. But overall, what we're going to try to do from here is a couple things. One. We want to see them in the activity that they're limited most by. If that's just moving everyday activities, we'll take a look at those. In this case, if it's cycling, we're going to want to get him on a bike in that specific position and see what he's doing. From there, what we're looking to do is to create some sort of change in that person's pain, sensation, or whatever they may be feeling, or at least give them some tools to work through what they currently have. So that might involve doing some sort of treatment with manual therapy in hands. It might have changing their technique of their movement. It might be a whole host of other movements that actually reduce their symptoms in order to improve the functional activity they're trying to get to. So we go in and we do some trial and error, run through all those things, and if we create a positive change and we improve their pain, we know we're on the right track to then strengthen, get them moving, and continue the, helping them throughout their fitness and activity. After all that, the subjective, the objective, the treatment, the loading, the technique changes, whatever you happen to do, we get to our plan for that person. Now, in general, we like to think we see most people for about three to five visits at most. The reason being is that we like to look at load in a distinctively different way than has traditionally been used, right? If you think of physical therapy, most people think of standard band exercises and stuff along those lines, which I get. It can be very helpful at times. But for most people who are trying to fitness activity, we want to make sure their rehab and their plan exceeds the stress that they're going to be needed to have for their actual activity. So we load fairly significantly and then build out a loading program or an exercise program or a strength program for them specific to that activity. So we see them for a few visits to kind of dial in what we need to load and appropriately do so. We show a change in their pain or their function and then we build out a plan from there. If the plan works and they need to be challenged more, they come back and see us again. I think it works well that way because it isn't necessarily that we're ever discharging people. We've now established a relationship and a plan of care for them and they can come back and we can play with things, new trial and error whenever they need to or we can funnel them into their next level of fitness. So we never really technically discharge anybody. We just keep bringing them back in and having to make sure they feel good and keep them on their wellness and health and well-being. And that's how we physical therapy. Now let's see it in action with an actual patient. Welcome to Recharge, woo! <laughs> All our patients do that when they walk in. <laughs> Come on in! <laughs> so, let's take a seat on the table. Ooh, there's a yoga mat. Let's see. So let me take a look at how you feeling today. How is everything? Feeling great. Why am I on my knees? Right feeling now? great. Feeling um, you know, you know, energetic. You know. Ooh. Even on a cloudy journey day. Even on a cloudy. How does journey. the knee feel after a week off? It feels fine. Like it's a little tight. Okay. But otherwise, it's pretty good. Like it's pretty normal. Okay. So it's just like, and I worked on not like worked on, but like trying to get being able to bend farther back, and I think I got Ooh. farther than usual, so, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. That is exciting. Working on things. Okay, cool. Subjective exam. Cut. <laughs> back set. All right. Right, land your back for me. Here's the objective exam. Definitely not cutting that. <laughs> Definitely not cutting that. <laughs> God, you gotta, you gotta listen, all right? <laughs> You so, got to listen. Yeah, exactly. Let me take a look at the sensitivity of the knee today. How's that? It's fine. Sometimes when I go like that, my knee pops. Sweet. Just by the way. Sweet. 
Some I Rice Krispies everywhere in your body. Just a couple of chocolate Rice Krispies. Mm, I'm more, I'm a, I'm a, oh, okay. I'm a original type of person. An original? I'm with you on that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah just in. classic. Relax in my hand. Those M&M ones though. Melt in my hand. Just. Of, of me moving this. I know, I'm really trying to, you know, keep it. Keep it a rest for the keep it calm. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I I'm trying to do better. Thank you. Oh, okay. Improvement. Okay. Mm. No, oh, that was, that was actually, that was a genuine smile. That was a genuine Sorry. smile. <laughs> I don't know if you got confused. Wait, I feel like you've been giving me non-genuine smiles now the last four weeks. Ooh, that's rough. Okay. Oh, that's not rough. That's not rough? Your non-genuine smiles? Not all the time. Sometimes I do genuine smiles. This genuine. is significantly better. Thank you, I know. I'm sending you to the beach more often. <laughs> oh! Go listen to heavy things. Okay. What we're gonna do is I am going to yell out a direction. Okay. All right, so forward, back, left, or right. Mm -hmm. What you're gonna do is if I say forward, I want you to hop towards that forward. Forward, yeah. All right? I got that. And then you're gonna hop back to the middle. Yes. All right, that was a bad example. Some of them are today. I know. If I say right, you hop to the right, and then back to the middle. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. so we're gonna do that eight times per leg. Okay. And then right after that, I'm going to start off on one of these dots here. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to hop to the other side, stick the landing, hop to the other. Yep. Right? Four times each leg. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that was a, a treatment session with one of our patients that Vince, our PT student, was working through. So he designed the plan, he ran it through everything, um, both movement, capacity, strength training. Uh, we were able to look at some objective signs in the beginning. All in all, the biggest part for her going forward is that we built her confidence in her movement. It's a strong history of injury with subluxations, um, and it's definitely a huge variable in this case. Not even the strength, not even the return to sport, but more so just building the confidence and getting used to different positions. And that's been the biggest conversation we've had, whether from normalizing sensitivity to patellar mobs and kneecap stuff to interesting positions. Everything's been geared towards building that confidence, not just in a psychological way, but making sure that she feels it when she moves her own body. And that's extremely important. Not only that, but we get a chance to watch a PT student be able to run a patient through um, some very strong strength training progressions throughout the last four weeks, kind of epitomizes for today. The plan going forward is actually to take her on into our CrossFit programming um, and run her through those for uh, the fall season as we go forward. All right, you're done. How are you feeling? Wait, I'm not done. Well, with the vlog, you're Oh, okay. I feel good. I feel strong. I feel improved. I'm a new person, you know? <laughs> no. I feel very tired. <laughs>